It's the Bulls Podcast, episode 13. Hey, Chicago Bulls fans, it's time for your Bulls Podcast. And here are your hosts, Marcus Couch and Wise Black. Welcome to the Bulls Podcast, coming to you from BullsPodcast.com. This is where we'll be bringing you the latest news, reviews, rants, rumors, and opinions on the players, coaches, and front office of the Chicago Bulls. My name is Marcus Couch, and with me is my co-host, Mr. Wise Black. Yo, 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 yo. What's up? What's good with all my bull lifers out there? I already know that a lot of you are just as stoked as I am right now. The bull season is finally here. The NBA season is finally here. So we all are finished with all of this waiting and talking about all this crap. Now we can get down to the nitty gritty. So without further ado, let's get into it, bro. All right. We got a lot in store for you this episode, including the Bulls trimming the roster and waving four players that we kind of expected. The signing of point guard Tyler Eulis to a two-way contract. The Bulls failed to sign Bobby Portis in a contract extension and a quick preview of the Bulls season opener versus the 76ers. We got all that right after this. Bulls fans, remember to follow the show on social media at Bulls Podcast and at BullsPodcast.com. All right, listeners, we are happy to announce that the Bulls podcast is now available on Spotify. So if you're a big Spotify fan, make sure you look out for us there. You can just go to bullspodcast.com slash Spotify, and it will forward you right to the place that you can add us right to your favorites and catch every episode as they are released. So uh, as I'm told, Spotify is actually the number two podcast platform next to iTunes. So all you Spotify hounds out there, Check us out there. All right. We're going to kick it off with some first news of the regular season, which is there are four less players that will be traveling with the Bulls as we go around to different games. And that is the ones that were waived. Antonius Cleveland, Derek Walton Jr., Kaiser Gates, and Jakar Sampson. If all four players clear their waivers, they'll actually become unrestricted free agents, and we might see them somewhere else on some other team Later on, uh, Samson, Gates, and Walton all signed training camp deals with the Bulls, and Cleveland was actually claimed off waivers by the Bulls in July. Uh, These four didn't really get a chance to play in any of the Bulls' five preseason games. They maybe got some garbage time in there. It was just the last couple minutes of the games. None of them that were released was really a surprise. Wise, what did you think of these four guys? And I know one in particular you really liked. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Sure, you do, man. Yeah, no, I mean, like you said, or at least for me, three of them, there was no surprise. I mean, I I really didn't see. I said it before, but I really didn't understand why the Bulls grabbed Jakar Sampson. Nobody remembers him for anything other than being Zach Levine's dunk dummy. Uh, Kaiser Gates, you know, he, he I don't know, he he looked like he was okay. He had a little okay jump shot, but another player at the four, which is a position that we are very saturated at. You know, and Antonius Cleveland, I didn't get to see him a whole lot, you know, so I didn't know much of what he could do. Like, but I mean, apparently, you know, he just wasn't that great in the Bulls' eyes. So no surprise there either. But what I really have a problem with is the Bulls, obviously, my man Derek Walton Jr., the Bulls letting him go. I don't understand why. Just because, man, I really feel like we have a gaping hole at that backup point guard position and we need a player with potential. I feel like Derek Walton Jr. has a lot more potential than campaign and Ryan Archidiakono. So I I really don't get why the Bulls let him go. Uh, Maybe he wasn't, you know, having a great showing in practice or whatever the case may be. But I also go back to the Bulls not seeing what they had in guard Spencer Dinwiddie, a six foot six point guard who could play stellar defense. And he had really good vision. With Derek Walton Jr., he doesn't have the height of a Spencer Dinwiddie, but he had that great vision, and he had a really, really nice shot, and he had that dog mentality out there on the floor. So, I mean, this is just another case of the Bulls not seeing what they have in the palm of their hands, a a pretty nice, talented prospect, but they just let him go for whatever reason, man. I'm not happy about it, but we shall see how it turns out. 
we do still have Raleigh Alkins. He's still on a two way deal, so he, he can is. play guard. Yeah, but right? he he's he's a two guard though. He's a yeah. two slash three. You know, we need a backup point guard right now. Yeah, well, we might have had it actually because the Bulls actually just signed Tyler Ulis. He is mm-hmm. a Chicago product from Marion Catholic High School out in Chicago Heights. He was waived by the Golden State Warriors last Friday. He spent two years at Kentucky before getting drafted in the second round by the Suns in 2016. And I went back actually uh, and took a look. He actually, in two years with the Suns, made 58 starts and played in 132 games. Now, you want to talk backup point guard. Payne only has start. He started, I think, 15 games total. So <laughs> this guy's got about four times as much that, and I think about five times as many games in terms of that. So Ulis averaged seven points per game in both those seasons with the Suns and 4.4 assists, only two turnovers, and averaged 23 minutes a game. So he can play. He can definitely play. Uh, they waived him after last season, and the Warriors picked him up for preseason. Uh, he didn't do too much in terms of preseason games. He only averaged three points and one-and-a-half assists. Uh, the two-way contract means he's going to be playing with the Windy City Bulls more than he will the United Center. But uh, as a backup point guard, he's actually allowed to play in 45 NBA games this season on his two-way deal. So we may have a good backup point guard to throw into the mix, maybe ahead of Ryan Archidiacono, but behind Cameron Payne, and maybe they can fight it out for the remaining spot. And if he does great, I don't see any problem in the Bulls picking him up for a minimum deal. So have you seen the tapes on Tyler Eulis, and what did you think of him? Uh, I haven't seen a ton of tape on Tyler Eulis. I watched him some when he was with the Phoenix Suns, and I liked what I saw on the court out of Tyler Eulis. Um, his shot wasn't that great to me, although he was one of those players that were looked at to be a pretty decent shooter in college, I believe. But in the NBA, I believe he shot it at a 28% clip from the three-point line during his two years with the Phoenix Suns. So not a great shooter, but he is a stellar passer he does have really good vision and that's pretty surprising to me because of his height being just 5'10 you know but that kid he has dimes and he 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 knows how to hit the open man um but I will say I'm not super excited about the pickup you know I'm not super excited about the pickup he gets cool points with me because he's a Chicago kid but uh, I mean, th- th- there's a reason that the the Warriors didn't keep him. You know, there's a reason that the the Phoenix Suns let him go as well. And they need a point guard. Yeah, <laughs> the Suns literally don't have a point guard, and they still let this guy go. Um, I think his lapses on the defensive end, and it's no it's it's no knock against him, but it's only because of his height. I don't necessarily think it's because of, you know, his play out there or even his effort, but it's, it's because of his height. He's only standing five foot 10. So there's only so much that he can do against, you know, bigger guards out there. But, um, I'm not sure really what to think. I'm a little bit in between, you know, with Tyler Eulis. I, I really just hope that he can come in and he can, like just showcase some of the things that he does really well. And that's uh, being a really good passing guard and, and just getting everyone on this team involved. And I really hope that he can improve on that jump shot, but overall, I don't really see him, you know, carving out too big of a role on the Chicago Bulls team. And that's just me personally, but with who we have at the backup positions right now in campaign and, and Ryan Archie Diacono, I, I said on my uh, YouTube video, I thought he was better than Ryan Archie Diacono. And I mean, campaign isn't stepping too far ahead of him. So, I mean, what do they have to lose? So I guess that's the reason why they picked him up, but I'm, I'm not too excited about it to tell you the truth. Yeah. Now, as soon as the news broke that Ulysses was coming our way, Obviously, the first thing I want to do is go to YouTube and see what he's made of. Mm -hmm. The thing that stood out for me was that, do you remember when we were getting kind of that first look of Jabari Parker? We watched him play some pickup games in a gym and they had that tape going on. Yeah. Well, Tyler was on Jabari's team and he was the point. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering maybe if he was brought in at Jabari's suggestion. Who knows? Ah, Ah, it could be. Could it happens. Be. That's just like Rowley. I'm sure that Laurie Markinen had said, hey, 
if if Raleigh Alkins is available, I want him. He's my old college teammate. You know, and you never know how that stuff works. But um, we'll see. We'll definitely see what happens. So we got a lot more to talk about in this show, and we'll get to that right after this quick break. I've got something new that I've talked about the last couple of weeks. It's bulls.fm. It's a website that I put together. It's a great network of all of the different independent Chicago Bulls podcasts that are out there. So just go to bulls.fm in your browser. Uh, we're going to have a live streaming audio channel pretty soon. But in the meantime, here's who I've got as far as a lineup. We've got us, the Bulls podcast. we got Bulls Gold with Edward Schuler, who you heard last week. We've got Bulls HQ. Chicago Bullseye with C Red Fred, Ball on Bulls with Big Dave and Chris, who we've had on the show, uh, the Bulls Beat with Doug Bonus, and the Big Red Bus, which is with Doug and Fred at the same time. So all the shows get automatically updated every hour, so it checks everybody's feed every single hour, so you're guaranteed that the site is always going to be 100% current with everybody's podcast. So you can enjoy the best Bulls podcast wherever you happen to be, at any time. So check it out at bulls.fm. Okay, the news just came out regarding the Bobby Portis contract. The Bulls and Bobby did not agree to a contract extension, but in the press, Bobby is saying he'll still be with the Bulls beyond this season. Uh, He basically said, normally that's how it goes, but with me, I couldn't see myself in any other jersey. Obviously, I've got Bulls DNA. Me and the city have a love connection somewhere. At the same time, I just enjoy playing for the Bulls. Hopefully in the spring, things can work out. So we've seen this kind of betting on myself strategy that's happened before countless times, uh, most recently with Jimmy Butler and Nikola Meritich. So let's hope Bobby has, you know, one of those breakout years and gets the Bulls into the playoffs this year and beyond. Um, only then, if he can actually get us to the playoffs, do I think he really deserves a huge payday. But if the Bulls have him just another mediocre lottery year, then we'll see what his true value is to the Bulls. I know you and I have talked about this on this show and on other shows that we've been a guest on as far as the range that Bobby Portis could probably command. Um, mm-hmm. I'm thinking somewhere between 8 and 10. I think you're pretty close to that range too. Um, so we'll see. We'll definitely see. I mean, if they can pay Felicio eight and a half million dollars a year, <laughs> geez, man, we can scrape off 10 for Bobby. Easy. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. And for that reason, meaning Felicio being paid eight million, that's obviously to me the reason why they didn't agree on the deal. <laughs> Bobby Portis refuses to get paid the same as the garbage man Felicio. But uh, I, I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. Coming into this season, just this past preseason that that, that just was underway, uh, Bobby Portis looked superb out there. Man, I loved almost everything that I saw out of Bobby Portis on the floor. Uh, he, he is that energizer bunny of this Chicago Bulls team, and I, I think that he definitely deserves a spot on this team. And I think he, if he can continue to keep up uh, uh, the pace of play that he was, that he had during this pe- this preseason, man, they're going to have to pay this kid. And I think that he'll deserve it if he continues to look as stellar as he is out there on the floor. And even in just this, what, uh, uh, this past, this last preseason game, he showed you that he can contribute, he can contribute as a starter out there as well. You know, if something catastrophic happens that I don't even want to say, Bobby shows that he has, that he is adequate enough to be a starter out there and he will produce. So with this whole thing of the Bulls not, you know, signing him to this extension, I'm not nervous. Um, And even listening to Bobby Porter stating that the Bulls is, you know, Chicago is in his DNA. That's obviously true. Bobby is one of those tough, hard nosed players and he has the attitude with the crazy eyes and all that. I love BP, but like I said, I'm not nervous. I do think that the Bulls, will be able to figure something out, um, especially with how Jabari Park is looking. Now, I'm not trying to bag on my man Jabari, but I don't know. If they're going to try to have Jabari play the three position, looking at how bad he's looked in this past preseason at the four, 
I just I don't see any way that he'll be able to be a productive player guarding smaller, faster players at the three point at the three position. So I mean, and it's really predicated on that, right? It's all about the money, you know. And I hear a lot of people talking about uh, it would be foolish for them to sign Bobby Portis because they need to wait and try to see if they can bring in some sort of free agent or whatnot. Yeah, I understand that, but like we said a little while ago. A Sheik has fallen off the books. Uh, the Caveman has fallen off the books. And if Jabari doesn't look good, that's another $20 million freed up. I'm not saying that we should pay Bobby Portis $20 million a year or even $16 million a year. But if Bobby Portis is like, what if he's asking for something between like, whatever, uh, 12 to 14? I think the Bulls would be foolish to not pay that man that price especially if he's having a productive season like he's looking like he's going to. If he gets six man of the year, yeah, give him 14 on up. What he if he d- what if he doesn't get six man of the year but 12. he's like in a running? Well, 10 to if, 12. 10 to 12? Okay. Yeah. I'd okay. sign him to a four-year deal. Uh I mean, that's not that bad. Really it's going to be based on the market and the Bulls are going to do the same thing that they did with Zach Levine. They're going to let the market uh give his price. And that's that's the way that the Bulls do things and clearly that's what they're doing here. Yeah. No kidding. All right, let's feature some of you guys, the listeners out there. We got some new iTunes reviews we want to go over. And remember, when you leave us an iTunes review, We'll definitely read them out on the show. It's been uh, it's been kind of slow in terms of iTunes reviews, so we know we're going to get a big new audience here now that the season has started. So here's what we do. If you subscribe to the Bulls on iTunes or if you just have iTunes, go in there, subscribe to the show, give us your rating. It doesn't have to be five stars, but if you like the show that much, give us five stars. Give us your review, and we will read it out here on the show. So let me start off with the first one here. Awesome Bulls podcast. This is by Marietto Schuster, five-star review. And this came from the German iTunes. He says, it's also perfect for international Bulls fans. Greetings from Heidelberg, Germany. Keep doing what you're doing. So we appreciate that. (laughs) That is beautiful. Yeah. And the next one just says Bulls. And it's by Michael AZX9. He said, I'm glad you guys do this. I like to listen to podcasts at work, and you guys do good work. Marcus has me dying sometimes, and Wise has been the man since the YouTube videos. Good work, fellas. Thank you very much, Michael. We appreciate that. Much love. (laughs) Yeah, so thanks so much. We do appreciate all that you guys have been doing in terms of iTunes. And we did get our first batch of iTunes stats, and we're really happy that the audience has been growing and growing. If you took Episode 5 and compared it to Episode 10, we doubled our audience. So hopefully by the time episode 20 rolls around, we'll have double that and on and on and on and on. So we, we appreciate it. We appreciate everything that everybody's doing. So with that, we will take a quick break and come back with our first game predictions for the Chicago Bulls. All right, we're back, and it's time for some predictions. The Bulls open the season up against the 76ers, who we just watched lose their very first game to the Boston Celtics in dramatic fashion. This proves that the 76ers may not be the powerhouse in the East that some people imagine them to be. They are good, but it's still a work in progress. So what are our predictions for the game? Who's going to be the best player? Will Zach go off and do his Zach things during the game? How's Wendell Carter Jr. going to handle Joel Embiid? Is Antonio Blakeney going to get 20 off the bench against his former teammate Ben Simmons? <laughs> Wise, what do you think? So you, you, you asked a lot there. But <laughs> uh, lo, lo, looking at, okay, now in no way am I comparing the Bulls to the Boston Celtics, but looking at that game yesterday, I feel like the Boston Celtics show – a lot of gaping holes that the 76ers still have. I feel like the Sixers, they didn't improve much from last year because with Joel Embiid, yes, he is like one of the best centers in the league and I love his game, but he still has shown that he is not a great back to the basket player. I think that uh, Joel Embiid, he's a, a really good like finesse center. You know, he can dribble, he can pass, he can, he can actually even pull up for a J, but if you play the right type of defense on him and you like meaning like you help out on the weak side defense, 
I think that Joel and B can be contained, especially with our rookie Wendell Carter Jr. sticking him, who is a very defensive minded player. Now, I'm not saying that Wendell Carter Jr. is going to stop Joel and B from getting his numbers, but I'm hoping that he can contain him. I really think he can, especially if the Bulls, other players, uh, play that key help defense on Joel and B. Now, with Ben Simmons, I feel like the Celtics actually exploited uh, or, or showed things that you can do to really slow down Ben Simmons as well. Now, he actually had a really good stat line. He almost had a triple-double even. But if you can close the hole, if you can close the lane to the hole with Ben Simmons, I think you can really limit his game. You know, like he he won't be able to penetrate the lane and just, you know, go up for a crazy dunk or something like that. He won't be able to pen, penetrate the lane, draw in the defense and kick it out to open shooters. And I think the way that we can stop that is by playing maybe a zone or something like that. Obviously, I'm not the defensive coach, so I don't know what they're going to run. But uh, <laughs> I really think that the key will be to, like, stop Ben Simmons from just driving to the lane, doing whatever he wants to do. And I understand that's a tall task, but the Celtics showed that it's not impossible. I think also the Bulls, I really think that we have some really good players on this team that can actually uh, play very well against this the 76ers team. Bobby Portis being one of them. He showed last season that he can, that he can show up and show out versus this team. Bobby Portis, Last year had a 39-point game against Joel Embiid, and I'm pretty sure he's going to come out tomorrow and he's going to want to showcase the same, especially with how he's looking right now. He's just more pumped and, and more ready to put the ball in a, in a, in a basket. So I'm, I really think that this Bulls team has a chance to really bring out a W versus the 76ers tomorrow. I'm not, I'm not scared at all, so... Yeah, after watching that that Celtics game against Philly, I didn't. They're not this big David and Goliath type matchup that I thought might happen. No. as far as our first game, I I think we can take them. I really do. So um, as far as you know, I, I want to see. I don't know what the lineup's going to be. If it's going to mm-hmm. be Lopez or Wendell Carter Jr. I was. I saw yesterday. They said it's going to be the same as it was in the last preseason game. They're going to mm-hmm. start Bobby and Wendell Carter Jr. Interesting, interesting. Mm-hmm. That's gonna make make for some stun, fun stuff. Um, I'm guessing. Dun, I bet you Dunn stops Simmons most of the game. Um, I think he's really gonna step it up. We'll mm-hmm. see. We'll definitely see. It's not me and you out there, so you know. We don't know. <laughs> you say you think he's gonna stop Ben? Man, I think pray. he's gonna hold him in check. I really do. I don't think he's gonna blank him out. Definitely not. He's he doesn't have that kind of defense. But right. I think he's put a, gonna put the clamps on him. I really do. Because I think. It, I'm sorry. I think the Bulls will really have to pay attention not only to Joel and B and and Ben Simmons. I think they have to also get up in the jerseys of their shooters. They yeah. do have some pretty decent shooters as well, and we can't forget about them. So, uh, I, but I think that we have the pieces, man. With the way that Zach Levine has been looking on defense lately, he's been putting in the effort. I really like what I see from Zach Levine on the defensive end, on, at least on ball. And obviously, Chris Chris Dunn is going to continue to do his thing. Justin Holiday, he has, you know, a little bit above average defense. So it's not out of the realm of possibility for us to beat this team tomorrow, man. <laughs> yeah, I think it. I think it can happen. I definitely do. All right. Well, that's it for some, you know, beginning of the season predictions for game one. We'll definitely see how it plays out. We'll be right back to close out the show right after this. And that does it for our final preseason show. As far as the podcast goes, Wise and I have had our own preseason with creating and starting this podcast. I feel we've kind of hit our stride right on time with the start of the season hitting just as we built up our own chemistry for the show. In the first 13 episodes, we went from just having a basic website and kind of pushing ourselves on YouTube to now having an audience, uh, getting an iTunes, Stitcher, and now even Spotify. We've had some incredible guests on the show, and we're going to continue to have that as the season continues. Uh, Coming up in the schedule this week, we've got obviously the opener in Philly on October 18th. 
Saturday night is the home opener at the UC versus Blake Griffin in Detroit. Then Monday, October 22nd, we got DeAndre Jordan and Luca is going to be in town with the Dallas Mavericks. And next Wednesday, we're going to hope to have a post-game show against the Charlotte Hornets. So now that the season has started, we are counting on you, the listener, to help fan the flames and help spread the show to every Bulls fan. And you can find you let them know to go to bullspodcast.com. You let them know to look on Instagram for us, on Twitter for us. Go to iTunes, go to Spotify, go to all kinds of different places. There are a lot of big things that Wise and I are going to be doing over the course of this season, and we want you, the Bulls fan, to be a big part of that. Both as fans and listeners, we're here for you, and we know that you're here for us. Exactly. Much like my partner in crime, Marcus, said, we the fans love you, our fellow fans, for continuing to listen to and interact with us on social media and all of that. Uh, Like he said, we began this podcast at the beginning of the summer when there was barely anything to talk about. But like true bull lifers, we still managed with the little we had. And it's all because of you guys that we are still rocking and rolling. You know, uh, it should be nothing short of an interesting season, and we can't wait to watch it all unfold games so we can talk about it. So, appreciated people. Much love. All right. Until next time, thanks for listening, everybody. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. Hey, Bulls fans. This is your Bulls championship announcer, Ray Clay, saying so long, everybody. Go Bulls!